Well, joining me to discuss this is Dr. Tina Pears, GP and expert on long COVID, which we haven't heard much about lately, but we'll come to. Tina, I made the point here that we're being very lax about people coming in. And yet, are we seeing the first signs, given that flu appears to be a major problem um, and perhaps lack of immunity? I'll get your thoughts on that. Are we beginning to see the government gearing up to get tough with us again? I think this shows how confused everybody is and how we haven't followed a scientific, ethical or morally correct direction from the beginning. Boris Johnson told us from the start we will always follow the science. I know, but he didn't tell us whose science he was following <laughs> because it wasn't the science that I was used to or many of my colleagues were used to or many scientists across the world could understand. So a lot of what we did was totally illogical, totally illogical. I have patients who were telling me that they had um, a, 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 an unusual virus in 2019. So it was already here by 2020. Uh, we had uh, a lot of patients who, um, you know, in September had, uh, had um, various uh, unusual flu-like symptoms. So do we blame China for all of this? Do we, do we blame China for not telling us what this was all about? No, I, d I don't think it's as simple as that, actually, Nigel. I think that, I think that we have um, overreacted to something that was completely treatable. Um, and so I'm going to say a few things that might shock a few people now. Um, and that we completely um, followed the wrong lines of, um, of, of policies, completely wrong. And by that, do you mean lockdown? And yes, lockdown was completely nonsensical. It didn't make any sense at all. There were a whole load of things. I mean, it's going to take how long have you got? You know, we've, <laughs> we, we've got a, so much to unpick here. So first of all, the PCR test is not COVID specific. Um, Kerry Mullins de developed it. He said it was never to be used to test for a specific virus. You can find anything you like with a PCR test. Uh, so it's not COVID specific. The, um, it's set at it's different labs, set it at different cycles. Mm, I, I don't know if you know all about that. Yes, well, yes because I tested positive mm. uh, at a moment when I wanted to go on a very important overseas trip. Mm. Um, but then they tested again and I was negative. Yes, and it Shows was explained... how unreliable it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it shouldn't be set at more than 27 cycles. Uh, anything above 27 cycles, okay. it's going to so, be magnifying something so much it would be a false positive. So, so, so we were yeah. diagnosing false positives Absolutely. is what you're saying. The government set it at 40 to 45 cycles. So okay. over 90% false positives. So you make that of what you were, you know, <laughs> no, 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 no. what no, no. that means. But basically yeah. lockdown's done enormous health harm to the country. Oh, terrible. And th then there was this ridiculous thing about asymptomatic spread. Well, the WHO in June of 2020 said that that was there was uh, that asymptomatic spread was absolutely insignificant. It was so rare. And yet we were making people stay at home who had a positive test that wasn't COVID specific, that was set to be very false positive when they were fit and healthy and could have gone to work. So the whole thing has been very mismanaged. No, there's I a would huge, say. There is a huge COVID outbreak, mm -hmm. if we believe the tests. Which could be treated. In China at the moment. Yeah. Oh, and yes, that one. Yeah. We're seeing the first signs mm -hmm. today of government beginning yeah. to tell us. I mean, let, let me put this to you. Yes. You know, if somebody has got the sniffles, yes. does it make sense, perhaps, for them to wear a face mask on public transport? No, none whatsoever. There are over 100 studies that show that face masks don't work. They, um, if you know the, those blue ones that everyone's wearing. Yep. Yeah, know, the cheapo the, ones. The cheapo ones that, that we wear in theatre when we're doing operations. Mm -hmm. It's there as a splash guard to stop the spit from the surgeon as he's talking to his colleagues okay. going into the patient. And also when you cut an artery in it, yeah. you know, we don't want it in no, your no, mouth. No, 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 um, too so much, too it's much. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. a split guard. Um, it doesn't stop germs. The holes in those are 600 microns. Each hole is 600 microns and the virus so, is five. So what you're saying then is, mm. as we approach a winter, yes. where there's going to be, by the looks of it, yeah. a lot more flu and a lot yeah. more COVID, you're, the government, if they're going down this route already, mm -hmm. it sounds to me like they've learnt nothing. Exactly. It's a complete waste of time and money, and it gives people a false sense of security, maybe. You know, people, if people are ill and have symptoms, they should stay home, just like they did for many, many, many decades if they had flu. People didn't go out. 
um, and uh, and that's the right thing. And you're too ill anyway to go out, so you stay home. You really are ill. And you are ill if you've got flu. And you stay home and you get over it. But the important thing also for everyone to realise is that COVID is treatable. And we need to, instead of testing people, if anyone has symptoms, they need treatment straight away. There isn't a single infectious disease where we say, let's wait until you're blue in the lips and it's really bad and then we'll take you into hospital and treat you. There have been all over the world, we have been treating acute COVID very, very effectively. Are you fearful? Are you fearful that we could head back down the wrong route with this government? Yes, very much so. Very much so. I can't see any scientific reason for all the draconian measures that they uh, threw at us and uh, instigated and ruined our economy, ruined people's Mm. mental health. Mm. Two thirds, uh, something like 25 percent of all young girls aged 13 to 15 are now self-harming. One third of our young people have mental health issues and anxiety. Small children have developmental delay because they need to see people's faces yeah. when we're talking. For their development, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's all being taken away from them. This is appalling what's happened. Our society, we were we told we couldn't talk to... We mustn't do it we again. We mustn't do it again. We were told we mustn't talk to each other, we can't yeah. smile at each other, yeah. we have to stand far away, we can't hug each other. Complete nonsense. For And so, mysteriously, did you notice, flu disappeared for two years. I know, I know. But, you know, that doesn't happen. <laughs> A lot of what they were saying was COVID was flu. But, Tina Pearce, some people did get seriously ill with COVID. My point is if they had been treated immediately, then we would have brought those numbers right down. Okay, but long COVID, you've specialised in the treatment of long... We heard a lot lot of talk about long COVID. We've heard nothing for months and months and months in our national media. And many people say they can't go back to work. Has that contributed to the number of people that are packed up work? How serious a problem now is long COVID? It, it, um, it, it was a big problem. It, uh, I do see a lot of patients with long COVID. It is a real uh, condition. Um, in my experience, uh, they have often, they are untreated and undiagnosed patients who have got a genetic predisposition mm. to developing long COVID. So they have undiagnosed and untreated mast cell activation syndrome, which is a condition where your mast cells overreact to infections and then make you very inflamed in different systems, which give you lots and lots of symptoms from low blood pressure to tachycardia to uh, rashes, mm. um, insomnia, anxiety, um, uh, chest problems, etc., etc. So it is real, yeah. uh, but it, uh, in my experience, it's predominantly coming out in patients who've got a genetic propensity to okay. it and in those who were not treated immediately for acute COVID. Would you so, say it's a relatively small number of people? Uh, no, I don't think it's a small number okay. because 17% of the population have mast cell activation syndrome. And are we treating it effectively now? No, no, not in the NHS, no. OK, no. Tina Pears on that quite sobering thought so for most of us it's not a great problem for some it is let's just hope the government do not repeat the horrific mistakes that we made last time round. i hope and pray that if they even attempt to do that we will stand up and fight back but last time we just did what we were told